When the Galaxy S8 was first released, I made the ultimate tips and tricks guide that included 170 tips and one rubbish one. Well, I found a bundle more awesome tips. 30 more in fact. So let's call this the Director's Cut. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching the Video Gadgets Journal and this is tip 171 to 200 of the ultimate guide to the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. If you want to plug USB devices into your Samsung Galaxy S8, you can do it with the USB connector provided. Simply plug the USB Type-C connector into the bottom of your device and then plug the USB devices into your connector as I'm about to demonstrate. We'll start with a simple wired mouse and as you can see the Galaxy S8 is powering the mouse and if I move a pointer around screen there it is and it works pretty much like a desktop computer although there is no right click. You could increase the size of this mouse pointer if you wanted to by going to settings and note here the mouse wheel works as well to so scroll up and down. The screen you want is accessibility, then vision, scroll down towards the bottom of this page and toggle on large mouse pointer if you wanted to increase the size like that. To add even more expandable storage to your Galaxy S8, you could certainly plug in flash drives and when you do, you should get a notification saying that you can explore the drive and transfer files if you want to. The Galaxy S8 does include a file browser on it, so if I tap the USB drive there, it will take me straight to the folders where I can look at the files, copy them, delete them, and basically whatever you would usually do in a file explorer. And in an absolute emergency, you could use the Galaxy S8 as a portable battery charger. This is an iPhone 7. And now it's been charged by the Galaxy S8. Unfortunately though, it doesn't look as if you can transfer videos and photos to each other's devices. One more thing about the USB connector, in the past you have been able to use portable hard drives. I've certainly used this Toshiba one on the Galaxy S7, but it doesn't work on the Galaxy S8 and I'm told this is because hard drives need to be formatted to FAT32, whereas this hard drive is currently formatted to NTFS. There's also the risk of corrupting your hard drive because the Galaxy device does need to power the hard drive and if there's not enough power going to the hard drive, that can cause serious issues. So try it at your own risk and indeed try many other USB devices and see what works on your Galaxy S8. I've already talked about the double function many of the quick settings have. For example, on Wi-Fi, you can tap it to, to turn it on and off, and you can long press on it to go into the dedicated settings screen. But some of them actually have triple functions, and to get them, if you swipe down on the notifications and then swipe down to get the settings, you can tap on the words to get what you might call a mini preview settings. For example, if I tap on sound, that quickly shows you options on changing the sound mode. If I tap on the flashlight, that gives me different levels of intensity of a brightness. So tap on the words on each of these settings and see out what you can find. If you have a fairly restrictive mobile data tariff, you may want to just restrict the way that data is used on your phone. To do this, go to settings and then connections, data usage, and here you will find data saver. If you switch this on, this will help cut down the data that's used. For example, it might show picture thumbnails, but it won't load the picture until you tap on the image itself. It will obviously work differently on different applications, but turn it on and see how it can save data when you're using your phone off of Wi-Fi. Now, remember when I was talking about aspect ratios when you were watching YouTube videos and whereby if you tried to bring up the home button, the aspect ratio would be covered? Well, that's not quite the case. You can actually drag this aspect ratio button anywhere on screen. It's a floating button and it will disappear if you're watching the video. If you tap on the screen again, it appears and then you can press on it to readjust the size of your video image. Now, remember the navigation bar buttons, whereby you could change the background of it by tapping on different color options, but as soon as you went back to the home screen or went in many applications, it wouldn't adopt that color and it would just be black. Well, there is an application that can force the color change on any application, and it's called Navbar Apps. Once you've installed that and allowed some permissions, you can open up the application and then toggle it on, and if you use the Get Color from Currently Running App, that should copy the color of the current app. So now if I go to Facebook, you'll see that the nav bar is blue, the same as at the top. So install that application and then you should be able to customize your Galaxy S8 to your preferences. Be aware, however, that sometimes this nav bar may produce some unintended consequences. For example, if I go to the camera app, it gives me a horrible bright blue color where I can't see the nav buttons hardly. While we're on the subject of cameras, you know that if you swipe to the right, you can get more camera modes, but you can add even more 
more camera modes by tapping on the plus button in the top right hand corner to take you to Samsung's, I guess, own camera app store. There's a few free ones to download. One such mode is dual camera mode. So if I swipe to the right and select that now, you'll see both the rear and front facing cameras at the same time. And it will take a picture simultaneously like this. Now it used to be that these pictures were spliced together, but it may be that the camera app hasn't been updated since the Galaxy S8, but check out these different modes and see if any take your fancy. Now, once you have all the camera modes you want, you can then tap on the three dots in the top right hand corner, go to edit and then long press to pick one up and move it to wherever you want to put it in your selection of camera modes. And if you want to add one of these to your home screen, again, three dots in the top right hand corner, add shortcut to home screen, tap on it and that will automatically, once you press done, add an icon to your home screen. So instead of having to select the mode once you're in the camera, you can tap on pro mode from the home screen. It takes you straight to that mode when the camera app launches. If you're using the camera for a long period of time or doing some filming, it now gives you a battery indicator in the top right hand corner just to let you know when your battery is running low. The front facing camera on the Galaxy S8 now includes a selective focus mode, very similar to the iPhone 7 portrait mode. To get it, swipe to the right and choose selective focus. Then you have to have a subject within 50 centimeters of a camera and take the picture. And then you'll be able to switch the focus point of the picture. Now this isn't gonna be a particularly good example. So if we go to my gallery and choose a picture I made earlier, which is this one, you can see a selective focus button in the middle there. And if I tap that, I can then shift between the focus of me and everything in the background being out of focus or a regular picture like that. And then I can save the image if I want to. It is a little tricky to use. Sometimes the focus doesn't quite work and you have to spend a while setting up. This took about three minutes to get the picture set up and all the exposure is blown out at the top, but give it a try and see if it's any good for you. Now let's say you're a big fan of the edge screen panels but you have so many of them you'd like to reorder them to your preference. You can certainly do that by going to the settings in the edge panel screen, long pressing on one of the edge panels, that will take you to the reorder screen and then you can pick them up at the top and drag them to reorder them just how you want them. The lock screen clock is swipeable to a couple of different options. For example, if you had a podcast running in the background and you wanted to start playing it again, that would play. If you have some music also playing and it's appearing in a notification, you can switch between the two by pressing the play button on that notification. So you can now see that it switches to the music and the podcast is in the notifications. And also if you had alarm set, it will tell you when the next alarm is. If you choose to have the always on display enabled, there's actually quite a lot of customization options in the settings. To get to them, you do need to go to settings, then lock screen and security, go down to always on display, and then choose the always on display you want, say analog clock. And then you can do plenty of things such as changing the clock style, changing the color of a clock, and even adding a background to it. So if you really want to spice up your always on display, go and have a look in the settings, make the changes and then see what they look like once you've made the changes. You can also change whether or not you want the home button to be displayed on the always on display. To do that, you would need to go to the settings, same place as before, always on display, content to show here, gives you the option of whether you want the home button and clock and information or just the clock and information. So if I choose clock and information, then lock the screen and you'll see the always on display, but the home button isn't there. However, it is still usable if I press on it. And finally, if you decide to turn off always on display, that's not a problem because the home button again still works even though you can't see it. If you want to quickly assign somebody to speed dial, you can go to the phone application. And as long as you don't use one, you can long press on any of the numbers and then choose a assigned contact by tapping assign, choosing the person you want. And then the next time you want to dial them, quickly long press on a number and that should start dialing them. If you need to change any of these, you can go back to the keypad, tap on the settings at the top, choose speed dial and then remove a person if you need to. Here's a funky feature that's somewhat from the future. You can extract text from screenshots so you can copy the text and put it somewhere else. Here's how it works. If you go to settings, for example, and if I bring in the edge panel 
On Smart Select, I can choose the rectangle screenshot. So if I select all of this text here, tap Done, then the Extract Text button, that will convert all of the text on the screenshot into text that you could copy and then maybe put into a message if you wanted to. Now, if you want to take screenshots from applications, then you might need to download this application from the Samsung Galaxy Store, which is called the Optical Reader. Once you have that, try and take a screenshot within an application. For example, if I go to the BBC News and do exactly the same thing with my Smart Select screenshot, get all that text there and then tap the extract text button. Again, that translates everything on screen into text that you can copy and use elsewhere. You can very quickly turn the built-in calculator into a scientific one by turning your device into a landscape and you'll get all the usual buttons there. Also included is a unit converter via this button at the top here. And you have various options such as length, temperature, even converting data from say kilobytes into megabytes. If you want both the camera to flash and the screen to flash when you get a notification, you can do that by going to settings, scrolling down to accessibility, then hearing, and here you have an option for flash notifications where you can toggle both of those on. If there are applications on your device that you're never likely to use, but you can't uninstall them because they're default apps, you can hide them by doing the following. Long press on a home screen, then go to home screen settings and you've got the option here to hide apps. So what I'm going to do is highlight the calculator, click apply and what you will notice is that it's now disappeared from my home screen. It's also disappeared from my app drawer as well. In order to get that back, you would do the reverse process. So go into home screen settings, hide apps, uncheck the calculator, apply it. It won't return to your home screen, but it will be back in your app drawer as the very last application and you can now add it again to your home screen if you wanted to. Let's say you want to lock your device to one application, for example, allowing a child to watch a YouTube video, but then they can't do anything else like go to messages and send stuff to people. Well, you can do that through the pin function and this is how it works. First of all, go to settings, then scroll down to lock screen and security. On this screen, scroll all the way down to other security settings. And then on this screen, scroll down again to pin windows. Now this works best when you have it obviously toggled on, but also when you have some sort of security. For example, use screen lock type to unpin. So if we just quickly set up a pattern like that, that will mean that when you get out of the application that it's locked to, it will lock the device. First of all, make sure that the ask for pin before unpinning toggle is on and then we'll quickly launch a application such as the BBC News. When you press the recent tabs, this latest application will now have a green pin on it. If I press that, that will enable pin windows. So once that's enabled, I can go through the application as normal, but I can't exit it. For example, if I press the home button, it's not going to do anything. If I press the back button, it will go back in the application, but it won't go out of the application. The only way to get out of this now is to press and hold the recent key again to unpin. But what this is going to do at the same time is lock the device because you have pattern lock. So I would have to then put my pattern lock back in to effectively unlock the device completely. And now I can press the home button and go back to my home screen. Now, if you wanted to change your notification sounds, you would do the following, go to settings, then sounds and vibration, notification sounds, default notification sound and choose from a long list here. But what if you wanted to use your own? Well, you can do by creating a folder on the device, importing sound effects into there, and they will automatically appear on the notification sounds list. And here's how you do it. First of all, go to the Samsung folder and then my files. And what you will need to do here is go to internal storage and then create two folders if they don't exist. The first one is a media folder. So list it exactly as it is there with an uppercase M. And then within the media folder, you will need to create a notifications folder with a capital N and then put your sound effects in there. So I have downloaded a klaxon sound, which sounds like this. And I'm going to copy that into my notifications folder. So if I long press on it, click the three buttons at the top, choose copy. Then I can go to internal storage, find my new media folder, then notifications, and then tap done. That copies the sound effect into the folder. So now if I go back to my settings, sounds and vibrations, 
notification sounds, default notification sounds, we should now find the klaxon sound right there. See if you can find one more annoying than that. If you wanted to add a custom notification sound to a contact, on the contact page, go to edit, then tap on view more, scroll down to the bottom of this screen, and then you can change the ringtone and the message tone for that particular contact. There have been one or two complaints about the Galaxy S8 screen having a slight red tint to it, but you can change this manually. To do this, go to settings, display, then choose screen mode and ensure that adaptive display is highlighted and this will unlock the color balance mode where you can change the red, green and blue balance. So if I take the red balance down, you can see that it has a much cooler look to it. Hopefully, if this does affect you, it will be fixed in a software update, but at least you can change it as a workaround for now. If you wanted to enable what you might call a dark mode on the Galaxy S8, go to settings, then accessibility, vision, and scroll all the way to the bottom of this screen and turn on negative colors. Now it looks brilliant on this particular screen, but if you go to your home screen, things are gonna look a little weird, and if you open up any applications, they're gonna look even more weird. But it's something to play about with if you fancy having a bit of fun with your Galaxy S8. And that makes it 200 and counting. Rest assured, if I find more decent tips and tricks for the S8, I will add them to the list. And if you're coming into this video cold and want to see the first 170 tips in this ultimate guide, then click on my main video right now. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might find it useful. Subscribe to the Video Gadgets channel for more content just like this. And finally, enjoy the rest of your tech day. Bye for now.